Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. We're serving a great God. How great thou art. How great thou art. Great enough to save and great to sanctify and purify. Great to empower. Envelope us with the power of heaven and great to solve every problem in our life. In my life. Physical problem, he will solve. Spiritual problem, he will solve. And financial problem, he will solve. Family problem, he will solve. How great our God is. Thank you, can choir. I enjoyed how great thou art this beautiful morning. The Lord bless you. Amen. Choir, I said the Lord bless you. Amen. And the greatness of the Lord be manifested in your life. Amen. And in your family. And in the inspirational ministry in your various churches, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning and worship you. Already we have been lifted up. Our hearts now understand how great you are. Lord, we say that today we will never think of our God as a small God, little God, temporal God, look and localized God. We'll think of our God, the God of heaven and the God of earth. And Lord, we pray that that magnitude, that majesty of the greatness of God, you reveal to every heart in Jesus' name. Bless your people this morning. All our ministers, all our professionals, all our workers, everyone here and everyone online, we're asking, Lord, your greatness will be manifested in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your amen should be as great as your God is great. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We've been talking about the God of all possibilities. The God of all possibilities. The God who is able, able to save, able to redeem, able to transform, able to touch every life, able to remove every mountain, able to solve unsolvable problems because with men this is impossible but not with god because with god all things are possible i said with god all things are possible all things today all things tomorrow all things every time all things everywhere all things private all things public all things the things that touch us in our body in our soul in our spirit all things with our god all things are possible this morning i come to take the subject on the angelic assuring confirmation of all possibilities through god we well, listen to christ himself he himself has assured us that with his father in heaven our father in heaven my father your father he had told them when he rose from the dead and that same god a father in heaven is able to do all things because by his declaration a declaration of fact with god all things are possible now the angel came from heaven and spoke to the father of john the baptist he wasn't born then and told him 
what God will do. After that, he came to Mary. Hail Mary, blessed of all women. And then he declared the message, you will conceive in thy womb. The word of Isaiah the prophet, that unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon a shoulder. And the words of Isaiah went on to say, A virgin shall conceive. And that favor has come to you. And then she said, I know not a man. Yes, that's exactly why the Father in heaven has sent the angel to you, because a virgin shall conceive and shall bring forth a son. And that son, you will call him Jesus, our Savior, our substitute, our sanctifier, our strengthener, and the one that will take us from the level of impossibility and get us us to the height of possibilities. This morning, something great is coming your way. And the angel assured her, and the angel confirmed to her that our God is able to do all things. Look at that in Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Here is what the angel said for with God. Nothing shall be impossible. It was said to Mary that day, it is said to you today. Yeah. That's with our God. The God we serve. The God who has brought us here. Everything we desire. Everything according to the promise and the pro prophecy of the word of God. Everything that will come to say, Lord, since I began the journey, I found this impossible. I found that impossible. I come today because I realize afresh that you are the God of all possibilities. And then we are sure today for with God. Nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Say that amen again. Amen. You'll find after this moment, as the Lord touches your life, and it does the un unthinkable, the incredible, the impossible, your life will take a new height. Amen. Will get to a new stature. And that thing that, you know, in the past, in a Christian life, in a ministerial life, we had, you know, given up and we have said, well, I'm a human being. I understand what can I do? That's impossible. That thing will change today. <laughs> For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Look at verse 38. In verse 38, and Mary said, behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Be it unto me according to thy word. Can you say that with me? Be it unto me according to thy word. Say that again. Be unto me say it with faith, affirmation in your heart. Be unto me according to thy word. And it will be. Look at verse 45, in verse 45, and blessed is she, and blessed is he that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Told her from the Lord. Told her from the Lord. What's a general problem? No matter where we are, no matter where, where we're coming from, no matter where you worship, what's our problem? We concentrate on what men have told us. The doctor said, the old man in our village said, the people that know the world and they know the history of the world, they said. 
we never think of the God of all possibilities what he has said the historian said the philosopher said the politician said that one said my financier said it's run out of money and because of that what can i do now but mary said be it unto me according to thy word and then elizabeth told her wonderful that you believe blessed is she that believe for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord if you had a dream and satan told you something don't wake up and begin to tremble and begin to sweat. If you had a dream and a personality came to you and said something, something that is like life is finished, don't go by what that personality told you in the dream. If you come to a new situation and a new locality in the world and the people in that locality, they say, come, 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 come here this is what happens this is what does not happen and you put a you know, panic and fear in your heart and then you carry you're pregnant with the words that men have spoken unto you then you're not going to have the fulfillment and the performance of the great god of heaven that is able to do all things but blessed is she that believe for there shall be a performance there'll be a performance in my life <laughs> say it for yourself there'll be a performance in my life for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord has god ever spoken to you when you hear the song has god spoken to you when you read the bible has god spoken to you and when you read the words the immutable words of the lord does god ever speak to you if he has spoken to you there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the lord as you look back it's your life, your calling, your ministry. Did God tell you anything when you started the ministry? What did he tell you? There shall be a performance. As you have been going on and you prayed and you fasted and you waited upon the Lord, did God tell you anything? There shall be a performance of what has been told you from the Lord. As you are preparing and you want to climb the ladder of progress and the ladder of ministry, has God told you anything at the beginning of that ladder? God told Jacob at the beginning of the ladder when he saw that ladder and angels going up and down, and there shall be a performance when god started with moses he told him something and what he told him oh, we know it's history now there shall be a performance when god called joshua at the very beginning of that calling they, they, we know what god told him and we know now as we read the record there was a performance when god called when christ called peter and told him follow me i will make you a fisher of men we now know the story that was a performance god never fails it will not fail in your life whatever surrounds you whatever you feel whatever you think whatever wind may be blowing one thing i know for sure in your life there shall be a performance we come then to look at this message intimately, the angelic assuring confirmation of all possibilities through God. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the angel's acknowledgement of unlimited possibilities in God. Unlimited. What God can do, 
what God will do. Unlimited possibilities in God. Number two, the active almightiness of the unchangeable person of God. Almighty. God Almighty is not small, is not low. You cannot put him inside the box and say, This is the perimeter and the territory for you. He's unlimited. And in your life, I see that you will grow wide, you will go high, you will go deep, deeper than deeper. I can't hear you. You know, if somebody said, um, you know, you are deeper life and you are coming, understand, we have uh, many different churches here. And what are you going to tell them? Where are you going to take them? I tell them that I'm going to take all those people as much as God helps me deeper than deeper. Yeah. If you are ready. I said, if you are ready. The Lord will do it in your life. When I became a Christian, born again, I didn't know anything they called deep or deeper. But it was as the Lord called me. And as the Lord showed me the way, he said, yes, you are saved. Yes, you are sanctified. Yes, you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. But I want to take you to deeper. That's how we have the Deeper Life Bible Church. And now he's called me to another level. I said he's called me to another level. You want to hear the level? He wants me now to come out of the closed door of Deeper Life Bible Church. Open the door and come to you and come to you and come to you and come to you there. And then uh, take you. I said take you. Deeper than deeper. It will happen in your life in Jesus' name. The active almightiness of the unchangeable person of God. Number three is the affirmed acceptance of the unprecedented performance by God. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the angel's acknowledgement of unlimited possibilities in God. Three things we're looking at here. Number one, the message of the angel sent from God. Number two, the might of the angels in the service of God. Number three, the ministry of angels as servants of the godly. They are our servants. They serve us. The ministry of angels as servants of the godly. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the angels' acknowledgement of the unlimited possibilities in God. And we're looking at the message of the angel saint from God. It tells us in Luke chapter 1, reading from verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. In the six months, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. And in verse 27, it says, to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. In verse 28, verse 28 says, And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. You are highly favored today. As he calls you into the ministry, a man, a woman, and he wants you to do work for him, run errand for him, go touch lives, and go transform lives of people, and go prepare them for heaven. What a great favor the Lord has given you. I pray you'll know the depth and the height and the length and the breadth of that favor that God has called you to in Jesus' name. The Lord is with thee. That's it. That's all 
we need the Lord great the Lord mighty, the Lord that is able to do everything and all things. He said, the Lord is, not was, not will be, is now, at this very time, at the time you need the grace of God, at the time you need the power of God, at the time you want to know the sufficiency of the Almighty God, that God will be sufficient for you. Blessed art thou among women. Have you ever thought about yourself that because Christ is your Savior and because Christ has called you to service and Christ has told you and called you to do something that no other person can do, do you understand that you are blessed among men? You are blessed among women. You know, if you know you are blessed, you carry yourself in that way. If you feel you are nobody, you are dejected, I'm nothing, and my family is nothing, and what am I doing? I'm a pastor of, you know, a church over there, and I don't have any self-esteem and no self-respect, and, you know, I'm just tolerating life and managing life. That's the way you'll carry yourself. And everybody will know that, you know, you feel miserable, you feel rejected, you feel unwanted, and you feel as if every door is closed to you. But if you know that thou art blessed among women, blessed among women yeah. any woman here today yeah. where are they <laughs> wonderful blessed among women yeah. the lord will single you out yeah. you will live a life of distinction yeah. and the moment you know that you are blessed that the lord has centered its mercy and grace upon you. You will carry yourself as somebody who knows by the grace of God, in the power of the Lord, by the calling of the Lord, I am somebody. Somebody there? You're not saved? You know, some people, they think it is humility for a child of God. I am a non-entity, non-entity, as if I don't exist. There's no way for me. There's no path for me. And there's nothing I can do. Change your language. The way heaven looks at you is the way you look at yourself. And the way heaven titles you. And he says, this is your calling. That is what you stand on. Any favored man, minister, professional, any man here today favored of the Lord? Favored of the Lord? Favored of the Lord? Carry yourself that way. Show yourself that way. When you appear in the public, even in the private, when you are praying by yourself, understand that thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among men, among women. Amen. Amen. And then in verse 29, it says, And when she saw him, she was troubled at the same and cast in her mind, cast in her mind, what manner of salutation is this that they should be? I never heard any salutation like this before. I never heard anybody telling me I'm just a village woman coming from behind the city. I've never heard anything like this before. You've never heard it before, but you've heard it now. And it's going to be a performance in your life. And then in verse, in verse 30, it says in verse 30, And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary. What's your name? Fear not. Fear not. Fear not. There were times David had to speak to his own soul. It says, Why are you cast down? It says, hope in the Lord. There are times you need to tell yourself, fear not. Tell yourself. Fear I'm not saying you should tell me. I've told myself already, but tell yourself. Fear and now when you say fear not, ask yourself, by the way, what are you afraid of? 
By the way, what was she afraid of? She was afraid of the angel. And the angel brought glad tidings and good news unto her, brought his special message unto her. We bring something special to you and something unique to you. Why are you afraid? And you're sitting down there, you're afraid, you don't know what next thing he will say, what will I say, except what God told me to come and tell you. And so why will you be afraid? I am not afraid. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Thou hast found favor with God. And then we're told in verse 31, it says, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb. You become the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah and bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. You will have an influence where Christ will be named and you bring forth Jesus the savior of the world. It was, she was a local lady, virgin that had not traveled beyond her own community and jesus said shall bring uh, god said shall bring forth jesus and that jesus will be the savior of the whole world now with what christ is going to do through you your influence will go beyond your locality because the angel said Thou shalt call his name Jesus. In verse 32, it tells us he shall be great. Something coming out of you will be great. And shall be called the son of the highest. The Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. In verse 33, verse 33 says, He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, forever, forever. That holy thing that will come from inside you will reign forever. Mary, Mary never thought of anything like that before. All that she thought of is this, my little stature and my little influence and my little community. And God said, I've chosen you. And you're going to bring forth Jesus and his influence will be forever and ever and ever. Amen. What if God tells you now that what he has called you to, the result of that, the outcome of that, the fruit of that will be forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 As I look at you from my understanding of your calling and the scriptures, I don't look at you as somebody that will do something and then the fire will go off in one year. I don't see you as somebody that, you know, you will labor, you will sweat, and everything will finish by 10 years. I see forever. I, I see forever. The Lord prosper the work of your hand. Yeah. And the Lord prosper the fruit of your ministry. Yeah. There shall be no end. Yeah. You contribute to the kingdom of God in a very measurable manner. And there shall be no end. Yeah. Welcome to number two here. Number two, the might of the angels in the service of God. The might, the power of the angels in the service of God. We're looking at Daniel chapter 6 and we're reading from verse 22. Daniel chapter 6, reading from verse 22. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me 
for so much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee O king have I done no hurt we're talking of the might of the angels that served God now Daniel was serving God like you are serving God I say like you are serving God and those people jealous people envious people and the people who wanted to block the progress of Daniel because his progress was through prayer not somebody praying for him himself praying every day three times he opened the window and then look the direction of Jerusalem and pray unto the God of heaven and some people said we need to catch this man as long as he keeps on praying like this things will be turning around in the direction of the almighty God and so they say what can we do the only way you can catch this man is on prayer anyone that prays to any God any person all this time in one month will be arrested be thrown into the lion's den they knew that that threat they said it will catch any man but Daniel was not any man and you are not any man I said you are not any woman it will catch any woman but you are not any woman you're a unique daughter of the Almighty God and Daniel 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 God wanted to reveal some things to him about the kingdom in chapter 7 chapter 8 and chapter 9 and chapter 10 and chapter 11 and chapter 12 and they wanted the lions to tear him and destroy him in chapter 6 they had their plot and their plan but as he was cast into the lion's den, they thought, we have finished him. Nobody can finish you. Yeah. You still have Revelation chapters ahead of you. Yeah. The chapters of service ahead of you. Yeah. They can not finish you. Yeah. Say, they cannot finish me. And so they threw him there. And those lions became like real good soft bed for him to lie on. And the king could not sleep in the night. But the man in the lion's den slept soundly. And in the morning, the king rose up. And the king came and then said with a lamentable voice, Daniel, is your God whom you serve day and night able to deliver you from the power of the lions? Oh, he said, live forever, O king, my God. Somebody shout, my God. <laughs> what God do you have? the God who has saved you and the God who said I will never leave you I will never forsake you in the lion's den it will be with you yeah. in Nebuchadnezzar's fire it will be with you and so he said my God has sent his angel and has shot the lion's mouth all the lions that hover around you and they try to smell your flesh and they are ready they want to tear you apart the Lord will shut their mouth because it says he sent his angel and the angel by the power and the might that those angels have it says they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me 
Stretch also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. The angels are so mighty, it doesn't matter how ferocious those lions are for you, for me, for us. It will shut their mouths. Look at number three here. Number three, the ministry of angels as servants of the godly. Hebrews chapter 1, we're reading from verse 13. In Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13, to which of the angels said he, at any time, seek on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Verse 14, are they not angels? Angels, are they not all ministry spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? The Lord has now made all those angels to minister to us, and you will not miss their ministry in your life in Jesus' name. Angels, Old Testament and New Testament. You find in Matthew chapter 1, the angel appeared unto Joseph and gave him confidence and said, What you see in your wife, in Mary, is of the Holy Ghost. You find angels in chapter 2, as, as it says, This is what uh, Fair and Herod will try to do, therefore go this way. In chapter 2 of Matthew, and when that Herod died, the angel was sent to them, bring a message and say, You can go back now now because uh, the one that was uh, searching looking for the life of the baby that one uh, is dead and you find Jesus Christ one was praying uh, in the garden of Gethsemane an angel came and strengthened uh, him and in the Acts of the Apostle chapter 5 uh, they locked them up in the prison and said you cannot talk again uh, and you cannot preach again uh, and the angel came and opened the door and he said Say, go stand and speak all the words of this life. You find them in chapter 12. And Herod was thinking, I'm going to take that man. And tomorrow I will kill him. I cut off the leader. And then all the members, the followers were scattered. And that night an angel came from heaven and tapped him. And he rose up. And all the chains fell off. And then he said, Come, put on your sandals and put on your clothes. And he did. And as they came to the iron door, automatically the iron door opened by itself. The Lord is telling us that the angels are not dead. They cannot die. The angels are sent to minister to the heirs of salvation. And Paul the Apostle was in the ship. And in the ship, it's like everything was going to capsize. And they were going to die. And then an angel came and said... Paul, the Lord knows you are here, and because you are here, all the 276 people in the sheep, their lives are preserved because of you. I said because of you, all those members of your family, they are secured in Jesus' name. The angels come to tell us the might of God, the message of God, the might of those angels and the ministry of those angels. Elisha woke up in the morning and then he saw and his servant saw all those uh, chariots and all the people that were sent go catch him. And was at ease. And his servant said, my father, look at them. What are we going to do? You don't do anything. Heaven has done it all. Yeah. He said, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Are you alone? No. I said, are you alone? No. In the night? In the morning? In the day, in the evening, in the village, in the town, in your state. In your state. Are you alone? And so Elisha said, Lord, 
open his eyes that he may see and the lord opened the eyes of the servant of elisha and he saw all the surrounding god had said chariots of fire of angel standing at attention heavenly bodyguard around you yeah. the lord has so provided for his own so that even the angels are ministering to us we're coming to point number two in point number two the active almightiness of the unchangeable person personality of god in luke chapter one we're reading from verse 34 luke chapter one we're reading from verse 34 then said mary unto the angel how shall this be that the question on our hearts when you have when you seem to have an incurable disease and the word comes to you fear not you are well you want to say how shall this be because the doctor said in their record they never met a case like this in all their practice and they say they don't have anything they can do mary had never seen anything like this in history no virgin had ever conceived without any connection with man and so she asked how shall this be seen i know no man you will prosper yeah. how shall this be i don't have money and i don't have any supporter how shall this be you will go from strength to strength global amen and you say how shall this be you will do something that nobody in your family has ever done you will teach with such power as no one in your church has ever done how shall this be if we have not seen that thing happen to any of the people we knew before if we have not read each in any history of the people and if you're a woman in particular and even the men have not done anything like that before and then you have the message that this will happen through you the first question you are asking is how shall this be but it will be because god sent an angel to tell you don't you see how special that is all those people in the old testament god sent men i say jeremiah ezekiel osir amos joel and uh, all nahum and all those people they were men but god specially positioned mary and sent an angel to her don't you know we're special i said don't you know we're special and then you don't need to ask the question how shall this be how was the sun hanged there without falling for thousands of years how how did the moon stay there all these many thousands of years all those stars the same stars that abraham looked up and he saw all those stars are still the same stars in the sky how did that happen and the red sea was parted how did that happen and look at river jordan as the militant people of god were coming and the feet of the priest on the shore the river was parted and they went there when joshua was on the battlefield and he looked at the sun and said stand right there don't move until i finish 
How did it happen? The same way it happened in all those cases, the way it will happen in your life. How shall this be seen? I know not a man in verse 35. Here is your answer. Here is Mary's answer. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Verse 37, in verse 37, for with God nothing shall be impossible. That's how it will be. I said that's how it will be. Very quickly, look at three things here. Number one, the unchangeable perfection of the Almighty God. Number two, the unchallengeable power of the ageless God. He didn't have any beginning. From all eternity, he had been. And his power is unchallengeable. Number three, the uncommon possibilities of the angels God, the God of the angels. Number one, the unchangeable perfection of the almighty God. Unchangeable perfection of the almighty God. Malachi chapter 3, Verse 6. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, for I am the Lord. I am. When he spoke to Abraham, I am the Lord. When he spoke to Moses, I am the Lord. When he spoke to Joshua, I am the Lord. Anytime the Almighty speaks, he always says, I am. And today I am. I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, the sons of Jacob are not consumed. Look at point number two here. Is the unchallengeable power of the ageless God. Ageless God. I say, chapter 43, and I'm reading from verse 13. I say, chapter 43, Verse 13, yea, before the day was, I am he. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work. And who shall let it? Who shall hinder it? God says, I will work. And who can hinder that work? What work is he going to do? Verse 19. In verse 19, behold, I will do a new thing. For Mary, it was a new thing. That thing never happened before. And for you, it's a new thing the Lord is going to do in your life. In your family. In your ministry. I will do a new thing. Now. Now. When is that new thing in your life? It shall spring forth. Shall ye not know each? I will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers in your desert. Amen for you. I see you now. All the doubt of the past is dropped. All the unbelief of the past is dropped. And all the misgivings in the past, will I, can I, must I, will I achieve? Is everything going to be all right? Now you have assurance, everything is all right. Because the Lord is going to do a new thing in your life, <clears throat> your family, your ministry. Number three here is the uncommon possibilities of the God of the angels. The uncommon possibilities of the angels' 
God. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 29. Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, to be conformed to the image of his son. When you look at yourself, at your past, even at your present today, and you look at, you know, all these many years you have been a believer in Christ, saved and serving the Lord. And now you come and it says you are going to be conformed to the image of his son. You are asking me of all people, how shall that be? Your time has come. Yeah. As Christ is, so you will you be. Yeah. And he that believes on me, the works that I do, he shall do. And greater works than these, deeper works than these, higher works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father. If you receive that this morning, it will happen in your life. Yeah. Look at verse 37. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things, all these things around us, all these things around you, all these things that you see, all these things that you feel, all these things that you dredge, among all these things, in all these things, we are more than conquerors, through him that loved us. I am more than a conqueror. Any mountain, God will give you the faith, that mountain will move out of your life. Any challenge, it will get out of your way because we have a God of all possibilities. And you can do the uncommon with a common person extraordinary with an ordinary person that uncommon possibility will be fulfilled in your life in jesus name i come to point number three in point number three the affirmed acceptance of the unprecedented performance by god the affirmed acceptance you know when something comes to you let's say for example you've been riding a evokes wagon and it's bringing out smoke and somebody had been ministered to by god to go and buy a vehicle posh it's luxury vehicle and it's great and you never thought you would even see it in the car of a man having such a vehicle and then they brought that vehicle they said this one does not befit you and they hand over the key unto you and your hands are trembling when you are stretching out your hand to get the key can this be for me am i good enough for this how am i going to be driving this around town what will people think but it's for you i said it is for you when god has made a promise giving a provision that you never thought of and you never thought that this could be you all the virgins in the land of israel they had read the prophecy of isaiah a virgin shall conceive a virgin shall conceive and none of them ever thought 
it will be me. Even Mary did not think that that promise so high, so great, and so deep could be for her. And yet, it was for her. All the promises you have read, and it appears, how will that be? How will that be? And it is for you. I said, it is for you. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. In Luke chapter 1, verse 38, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be each unto me. Be each unto me. Be each unto me. That should be your language from now on. You reach the promise of God. You see the possibilities in God. And then you say, be each unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Now, the departure of the angel is not the departure of the promise. You know, we've come to the meeting. And the Lord has given us all these promises, all these possibilities, and then we end the meeting and we depart. Although we depart, the promise will stay. The power will stay. And the possibilities will stay. It'll stay by you there. It'll stay with me anywhere I go. The departure of the angel does not cancel the affirmation of the prophecy. It will happen. Look at verse 45. In verse 45, And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the acceptance of divine performance by faith. Number two, the assurance of definite performance by the Father. Number three, the adoration for due performance in faithfulness. Number one is the acceptance of divine performance by faith. Already, that's what I read to you, that Mary said, be each unto me. In Romans chapter 4, reading from verse 20. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And then in verse 21, it says, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. Performance has come in your ministry. Performance has come in your life. And there will be no delay because he was fully persuaded. And you are fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Look at number two here. Number two is the assurance of definite performance by the Father. The assurance of definite performance by the Father. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. In Jeremiah chapter 1, reading from verse 12, Then said the Lord unto me, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. The word of the Lord will be hasten in your life, in your family, your ministry. It shall be performed 
in Jesus name number three number three says the adoration for due performance in faithfulness now we adore now we worship now we glorify the Lord because what he has said he will do he will do First Peter chapter 1 reading from verse 8 First Peter chapter 1 verse 8 whom have you not seen ye love in whom though now ye see him not yet believing ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory joy joy why is the joy 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 unspeakable you express your thanksgiving to the Lord you express your joy your excitement to the Lord here is what God said he will do he spoke to you directly this morning and he said this is what he will do and Mary glorified the Lord and Elizabeth glorified the Lord and Zechariah glorified the Lord and you too today you will glorify the Lord great things will begin now mighty things will begin now the Lord will take you higher further than you have ever been today is the beginning of a new day beginning of a new project and the beginning of a new achievement in your life in Jesus name why don't you rise up rise up you are going to pray and you are going to tell the Lord oh Lord I want the fulfillment I want the performance I want all this to be done effect it accomplish it in my life he will how shall this be the Holy Ghost will come upon you and overshadow you and that holy sin that shall come out of you shall be called the son of the highest Stop your voice to the 